Awesome. So I'll be talking about a product we're building here at Crypto Econ Lab called uh, Atlas.Storage. So I'll quickly go over, um, you know, what Atlas is, what the vision, uh, what our vision and roadmap looks like, why we think it's important to build this product, um, and how the market opportunity and the Falcon economics kind of drive the uh, drive the reason of why we're building this product. So the so the so the big vision for um, Atlas dot storage is to store uh, humanity's uh, geospatial data and make that available uh, through APIs and SDKs to anyone. So that means uh, storing, fast retrieval, computation, and integration with smart contracts to be able to do stuff on chain. Uh, and so, and then if you think about this as like a, this is like an end to end like Web three native development uh, platform, whereas like today you know we have a lot of like these centralized web two uh, native development applications. And then the other part to this is to build a community uh, that advances geospatial data sets, but also builds web three native technology and GIS. So an example of this is if there are any like geospatial data or GIS experts out there, there's a lot of stuff with um, data being siloed and stored in different servers, different formats, uh, APIs and integrations being locked into specific vendors, uh, and then having trouble being able to do computation on them or like having to download the data set and do computation on AWS or GCP. And so we wanna bring all of this into the decentralized web and you know, obviously Filecoin and, and be able to do um, storage retrieval and computation. So, so what does that really mean, right? So I think uh, providing an end-to-end -end service that supports storage and retrieval and computation unlocks use cases that uh, didn't really exist before. And so for example, you can think of a you can think of a scenario where like a company can, a company or a person or a researcher, anyone can uh, pull data from atlas.storage um, and then run, so, do some sort of computation and then turn that, uh, turn that computation into a transaction based on a smart contract. And a concrete example of this is you can imagine uh, there have been you know, a lot of uh, wildfires in California. So a wildfire destroys a part of California or, or a neighborhood. And so an insurance company uh, can use atlas.storage to look at an image before the fire and after the wildfire, run sort, run sort of uh, computation, which in this case could be like a computer vision algorithm. And then based on the output of that computer vision algorithm, um, execute a smart uh, contract transaction that would pay the homeowner some money to start rebuilding their home. And so like a workflow, there, now there are a lot of workflows in insurance, uh, finance, defense, and other industries that like could really uh, use help for like these kind of workflows that today it takes like months or weeks, I'm uh, sorry, months or weeks to happen um, that they could like do this in hours or days. And so those kinds of like productivity gains or unlock new, new use cases um, r really exist with this kind of workflow that don't exist today. Um, the second part to this is a community-driven approach where the community is super passionate about finding useful ge uh, geospatial data sets and uploading it on the Filecoin network. So you can think about like, you know, now, right now we're talking about uploading, um, you know, one data set or two data sets, but eventually you want to upload all of the uh, humanities geospatial information. And one single entity cannot do this. There needs to be, you know, lots of nodes, lots of people, uploading geospatial data sets. And a problem that, you know, that's gonna be really interesting to solve that we're looking into is how do you verify that data set uh, is actually the data set it claims to be. Um, and, I, and I'll give you a small example here. A small example is um, like you can take a satellite image and, and say you're looking at that satellite image, right? How do you know it's not been manipulated? How do you know that uh, the, the pixels that you see on the image are the true pixels of what was captured uh, by the camera? Right, so like this kind of like being up, being having a community, being able to upload it, and then being able to verify that that data is what that data says it is, is, is super important. Um, so a little bit about the roadmap of of what we're building here. So we're going to start storing satellite imagery on the Falcon network, and and the first step is to store all of Landsat. So Landsat is this program started by NASA and USGS in 1972 uh, that has been taking pictures of the Earth for the last 50 years. This program has about um, 10 petabytes of uh, image captured already, and, and that's growing as their sensors and their uh, images get better over time. 
After that, we're going to move to other satellite imagery, other geospatial data. You can think of this as like topography, natural disaster perimeters, uh, water levels, air temperature, all of these different things, right? Like it could be tra uh, transportation of cars, uh, any geospatial data. Um, and, then, and then the third part is to partner with existing geospatial uh, data companies to integrate their data into atlas.storage. And we think this is important. So like, you know, first we can start out with like public data sets, right? That's, it's online, you, you download it, you make this available through Filecoin Network. Um, but that's like not all the value that exists in the world uh, with geospatial data. There's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of companies building proprietary data, uh, uh, in, pr proprietary geospatial data um, that like never gets to see light of day or there you know very few companies get access to it and that can make a lot of difference in like company building uh, po policy development research etc so uh, our timeline uh, our timeline for the next couple of years kind of kind of looks like this so you can see that uh, by end of q2 uh, we plan to launch our MVP our MVP will have uh, being able to work with Landsat 9 and retrieve that image uh, by end of the year next year, we want to have uh, all of Landsat, which, as I mentioned, 10 petabytes and, uh, and computation, so integration with compute over data or smart contracts uh, integrated into the Atlas suite of developer tools. Uh, and then after that, we want the community to be able to upload uh, data sets. We will upload other useful data sets that we think uh, that, are, that are great, that could be an example of European Space Agency satellite imagery, uh, other satellite imagery, other land classification, uh, geospatial data, and then also like building, uh, building some sort of verification network where you can verify that the data has been, has not been tampered with. Um, so like, so, so I talked a little bit about like why briefly, um, but I think we think the reason why that geospatial data is important and why we're building atlas.storage is that geospatial data is core to what humans do every day. Um, there are lots of use cases in you know, metaverses, climate, lending, insurance, construction, et cetera. But uh, one big part is um, you know, being able to prove that like, the, uh, the data that uh, we are seeing today is the same data that, you know, that you're using uh, in your applications. The, um, the other cool part is that, uh, you know, there's like hundreds of petabytes of geospatial data and it's growing. And so being able to like build an archive of all of this data and make that potentially useful uh, unlocks really cool use cases in research and uh, in company building, which, which is something I'm super passionate about. Uh, and then finally, the, the market size is really big. So like, you know, there's like a lot of value to be unlocked, a lot of value to be gained, and a lot of value to be captured uh, from this. So... Um, and of course, right, like I'm sure a lot of you have seen the slide by now, either here or before, but the mission of Filecoin is to create a decentralized, efficient, and robust foundation for humanity's information. And this mission of Filecoin really aligns uh, well with the mission of uh, atlas.storage, which is to, to put all of humanity's geospatial information and make it accessible on the decentralized web. Um, so before I get into Filecoin economics, I want to get into like you know market size and and the kind of the cost of this data. So uh, satellite and aerial imagery market size is estimated to be 30 billion by 2030. And when I say satellite and aerial imagery market size, you can think of this as like satellite, air, aircraft flying in uh, in the air underneath the clouds, and drone imagery. Um, this is image capture only. So this is not uh, storing image, retrieving image, computation. This is image capture only. Um, and then the geo, uh, geospatial analytics market size is estimated to be 110 billion by 2026, which is you know not that far away. And as you can see, it's like a much bigger market, um, as as a, you know seems pretty obvious over the last 20 years. But over time, like certain data will become uh, a commodity, and like the analytics um, of that data will be the thing that generates value. Um, and then. One like one flip to this is like commercial satellite satellite imagery can cost like twenty dollars a square kilometer to store on an annual basis with uh, GCP or AWS, and so like the, that means that like the U.S. land area would cost one hundred and eighty million dollars per year, and then the world land area would cost three billion dollars per year. So you can you can quickly realize that there are like not a lot of organizations that kind of can that can store this information. There might be a few governments, a few private companies, but it gets very costly very fast. And this is where um, the Filecoin ec economics really kick in. And it's because you can drop these costs by like, you know, an order or two of magnitude. And if you think about why, uh, or if you think about why this brings value, um, in a business, like, or in, in, 
in a, in a business where you have to like store a data, say, it, say you're just storing you know, geospatial data for, for the US and it costs you $180 million. You're storing something that costs $100 million. That means that like, uh, you have to like, pay for the cost of those $100 million, right? And you do this, you, you monetize that data, and when you monetize that data, there's not a lot of people that can pay you $100 million. You have to generate $100 million in revenue just, to, um, just for the cost of that data. It does not include you know, whatever operational expenses you might have. By dropping this cost um, by an order of magnitude or two or whatever it may be, uh, you essentially create a much larger user base for that data. That means there are more people who are willing to pay for it. If there are more willing, people willing to pay for it and you have to pay less, you can, you know, you can lower the price and, and, uh, and still generate a lot more revenue than you would have in, like your previous, uh, in like the previous world of uh, centralized complete computing. And um, this is what leads to like, uh, real value gained because then all those people can, again, do research and build companies and, and uh, do whatever they were going to do with that data. Um, so, so that's kind of why the Filecoin economics really is, that's why Atlas.Storage is a good use case for Filecoin. Um, and then, you know, some of these stats, as you can see, right, like, uh, I think Filecoin has over 16 or 17 or 18 exabytes of storage capacity. Um, the, the geospatial data is in the hundreds of petabytes and growing, so that means that, like, a lot of that excess, or not excess, but a lot of that capacity that exists um, can potentially be store, uh, held by geospatial data. So to recap, um, so you know, Filecoin is the uh, Falcon, the Falcon network is the perfect place to store this kind of large scale geospatial data. Um, computation and smart contracts unlock the true value, uh, just not the data, but but you know that that didn't for opportunities that didn't exist before. And we need help to build this. So so if you are um, you know an engineer or a data scientist, or in any way you're interested in helping us build this product, come reach out. Uh, our contact information is right there. Uh, this is our website, our, our Twitter handle, um, and if you're in Filecoin Slack, you can join the Atlas Slack channel. Uh, if you're a storage provider who's interested in storing geospatial data, uh, again, reach out. I think there might be um, some, you know, some ways we can help each other. And then the biggest thing is like, if you are um, an entrepreneur, and a developer, or a researcher who's interested in using this product, um, I think we could do great things. So, thank you. Any questions? Cool. Well, <clears throat> thanks for your presentation. That was very interesting. Um, there's a team out of um, University of Maryland that's been funded by the Filecoin Foundation for the Web that's doing um, stuff with Landsat 9. Are you guys working with them to do some of this stuff? Yeah, so uh, very, very cool group of people. Um, uh, thanks to the Falcon Foundation, we were, set in, uh, we, we, we were put in touch with them. Uh, and we're tr trying to figure out a way to like, work together for specifically Landsat 9 so that we're not you know, wasting, wasting resources. Amazing. That's, yeah. It's my former grad student, so I'm like, oh, I'm oh yeah, going make sure he gets it. He's very in. awesome. Yeah, that's great. So, so you said you can. Uh, Lower the price by one, potentially two orders of magnitude. How is that going to work out? Yeah, great question. So, I mean, I think part of you know uh, part of what how Filecoin works today is that it's it, it is as of right now uh, negatively priced data, right? So, like, I think that as CB mentioned, it's that's going to change in the future. But like, that's part of the reason why um, we're going to be able to build something like this right now, and then over time, uh, over time, the cost will drop naturally. Uh, for I mean, storage costs all over the world will drop naturally uh, as as that changes. But that's really what's the fact that we can do that today is what's really driving storing all of this data uh, on the Falcon network today. Yeah, but I mean, when you say today, right? I mean, we all I think agree it's an anomaly that you have uh, you know negative pricing on that, right? Eventually, the market will catch up to that, right? And then and then what sort of the price in the long run? You get, did you do any modeling about that? Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. So I think, uh, oh, okay, so yeah, so great question. So I think the real answer to that is that over time, like people are gonna, you know, pay for the data, which is oh, from using retrieval markets and compute markets. And like that is what's gonna generate revenue um, that will like, you know, offset some of the costs for, for storing that data. Okay, but I mean, a hundred billion or so is a lot of money, a lot of revenue you got to generate on an annual basis, right? 
Um, yeah, yeah, I, I do agree with that. I just, I think that like uh, having more people uh, accessing that data will like lower the cost per user. And so like over time, the the theory is that like if more people are paying, you know, some pe more people are paying for access to that data, that that specifically will offset the cost of, um, you know, a lot of that storage cost that we're seeing today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thanks for the talk. Are we are we uh, seeing? Um, uh, are you uh, planning on making some sort of standard for how this data should be perceived? Um, like there's different formats of uh, parquet or just for geospatial data. I'm just curious if it's like special format or it doesn't really care, like just upload a bunch. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, no, great question. So um, I think one is that there's already a lot of good open standards for geospatial data, and we're not trying to create our own uh, open standards that the geospatial community has already created, right? They've done a really good job. Um, like, for example, if you're searching for uh, geospatial data, like metadata search, such as stack or uh, satellite imagery using cloud-optimized geotiffs, right? These are standards that have like proven to work for, for like a set of use cases. Um, and so because all this geospatial data, this is not new spatial, geospatial data, all this data exists already, we're um, unlikely to create new formats today for like uh, how the data is stored. Now, it could be that because of the way that we're going to store in Filecoin, it might need to be like stored a little bit differently than you would on, you know, like a um, traditional SSD. And so the way that that data gets retrieved um, might change and I'm not sure and we might create open standards around that but at the end of the day like I think most users are still expecting data to be returned in some sort of like format that they use today such as JSON. Yeah um, I think it's kind of a follow-up question but like it does feel like um, to get to the point when you have like the end product you need to solve a lot of technical issues so I was wondering whether or like this if, like this is from the start considered as part of the a bigger initiative of like getting faster retrieval and kind of API ready data out of Filecoin storage or is it more like a, a, a test project uh, that might later lead to that? Yeah, great question. So uh, I think I think that uh, what's going to happen is that like people are going to make progress really fast on like getting retrievals or getting data out of Filecoin. Um, similarly with compute, we have our own timeline, but we're working, going to be working with like you know the teams that are building retrievals and the uh, retrieval software and the teams that are building compute software to make sure that we are aligned so that we can do some of the stuff that we're talking uh, that we're talking about here. We definitely don't want this to be something that we like invest a lot of resources and and then you know push it to the side or don't end up doing something with awesome thank you